What's up folks, today I'm going to trim my boost phalangeris, so this video is going to be all about the boost phalangera. The boost phalangera is a flowering rhizome plant which can only be found among the island of Borneo. The correct pronunciation for the plant name is actually bouquet phalangera or bouquafe elandra. Now I'm American and when I see the four letters B, U, C and E put together, the first thing that I instantly think about is the name Bruce. So I'm going to pronounce the word like the way my American mind is wired. So I apologize if I offend anybody calling the plant Bruce Philandra. Borneo is a tropical island which receives consistent rainfall annually. The boost phalandras are typically found in or around water streams, sometimes even in areas where water are flooded whenever it rains heavy. Let's talk about the aquarium history of the boost phalandras. When the boost phalandras first got imported into the United States and became available for the local hobbyists, everybody that kept planted tanks that knew about the plants wanted to get their hands on them. But the catch to the plant was the price tag. It was ridiculously insanely high compared to what it is nowadays. You're talking about 15 to 40 maybe even 50 bucks that I've seen at times per rhizom containing 4 to 5 leaves only. I guess it was the snowball effect of supply and demand because not a lot of boost philandrus was available in the United States at that moment so people was taking advantage of that really really hard but nowadays since more and more importers are able to import these plants into the states it's becoming more available and the supply of the plant has increased so the price decreased the main reason why people was willing to pay the hefty price tag for the boost philandrus is because of the color selection that came along with them. Now before the Boost Philandrus came along, all we really had was just Anubias, Bobitis, Java Fern, and various species of ferns only that we can attach to rocks and driftwood and still survive. Besides that, we have mosses and everything else has to be inserted into the substrate in order to survive. So Boost Philandra was like a drug in the market. Though Boost Philandras do have a lot of colors or color selection I would say I don't think there's any colors that the boost philandrus don't come in trimming or propagating boost philandrus is a fairly simple process and it's the same concept as trimming anubias except for the fact that boost philandrus have longer rhizomes in comparison to the anubias which makes them much more easier to trim so as you can see down here there's a reddish or pinkish stem right there which leaves grows off from and that stem right there is called the rhizom of the plant so where I would trim is probably down here for that plant right there but you gotta keep in mind that when you trim make sure the top portion of the plant that you're trimming has some roots because it's much easier for the plant to continually grow once you cut it as opposed to trying to use its energy to grow more roots so the bottom portion will continue to grow some leaves and the top part will be placed somewhere else and continue to grow also. But I'm not going to trim right there because I will be removing two rhizomes from behind this rhizome right here. I will also like to note that there is a flower that's starting to sprout out of this Boost Philandra right here. And Boost Philandra likes blossoming flowers or blooming flowers every once in a while. The sprout that you've seen in the previous video will eventually turn into this right here. And eventually it will turn into this over here. And the flowers, well the flower actually blooms out. And the flower can look different depending on which Booth Valandra species you have. And eventually the petal will rot off and it will look like this. Now I'm not sure if I should even call it a petal, but um, I'm also not sure what happens to the flower stem because I don't keep track of that all I know is that they flower
Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get every single trimming with roots, but this one does appear to have a little bit of root growing up. But um, I would like to note that LED lights are key to getting the color from the plant because if you move this plant away from the LED light, it will not be as colorful or bright as it would if it was directly under the LED light. Now I hope that y'all can see this, but one thing that is unique about Boost Philandros is that they have these white dots all over their leaves and all Boost Philandros species have this. If you haven't known already, this is the next step into attaching the Boost Philandra onto driftwood or rocks. In this particular situation, it will be a rock. So what you want to do is apply probably around like a, a, a fourth of a pea sized drop onto the Boost Philandra rhizome. Not on the leaves, but on the rhizome. Make sure you don't cover the roots because the roots actually needs to grow. So once you apply the gel, just press the boost philandra onto the rock and hold for like 10 or 15 seconds and then release and if the boost philandra stays it's most likely going to stay there for a while or forever until you remove it if it doesn't stay just remove the boost philandra remove the gel and reattach again all right guys that's it for that video and if you're new to boost philandra i hope that you learned something if you did it i still hope you enjoy the video